The postseason is upon us as we get set for preliminary round action in 2A as it is the Frazier Commodores and the Carmichael Mighty Mikes, two teams battling for the six team seed as both of these teams trying to make their way into the actual bracket here this evening on MBI Live and the Trib Live High School Sports Network. Alex Lyons, Jeremy Salou with you this evening for all the action. Frazier, 7-14 overall, 3-7 inside of 2A Section 2. Carmichael, 6-12, 3-7 inside of their section as both of these teams coming out of 2A Section 2, which produced the number three seed in the bracket. That is the Sarah Catholic Eagles, who many team, many people believe they got the short end of the stick being put at that three seed and on the same side of the bracket as Nashanik, the defending champs who beat Sarah Catholic a season ago, as we'll take a look at that bracket on your screen. Down below, at the bottom of your screen, that's where we see the Frazier Commodores and the Carmichael Mighty Mikes fighting for that 16 seed. The winner of this game will get Our Lady of Sacred Heart. Then you have Springdale versus Ellis. They will fight to take on number two, Nishanik and defending champs. And then Aliquippa and Southside will battle to face number three, Sarah Catholic in the first round as this is just a preliminary round matchup. Frazier making this preliminary round matchup though has now made the playoffs for 11 straight seasons and in season number one for head coach Kenny Johnson. He finds his squad in the postseason. Sorry, Alex, I'm, uh, I'm getting situated. I'm trying to get my bearings straight here. A little, a little bit of a late arrival. But, yeah, I'm excited to watch. I haven't watched the Frazier girls play. Last year's breakout player of the year for our Super 6 All-Stars was Delaney Warnick. So I was excited to get her to play this year. I was tr- She's one of those players I was trying to get into the summer basketball league, but obviously we know she's a uh, hardcore softball player, played travel ball all summer long. Um, but, yeah, I'm excited to see Frazier play, obviously, both of our alma maters. But uh, the last time they met these Carmichael's Mikes, it was an exciting game. Yep. Carmichael was tra- or um, Frazier trailed by what nine going into the fourth quarter? I believe so, and, and ended up winning by, by seven, I think, or something. Or they ended up winning. I know that. Uh, but uh, final score 49-40 in that game. They uh, were down by seven going into the quarter, I, I believe, the last quarter. But yeah, I, I'm expecting another similar game. I think if Frazier gets off to a better start, though, I think they should uh, be able to handle uh, what Carmichael is going to throw at them. I think uh, the other thing is Car- or Frazier is a epitome of a team that has gotten better as the season has worn on which is very common here when we have a first year head coach and implementing new systems so and and you know a team that knows a lot about implementing new systems and kind of having new uh people at the helm is this carmichael's team coming into last year they were under their third head coach in as many years as now in year number two of Yearly's tenure at the Carmichael's helm. And, you know, getting her squad into the playoffs after finishing the season just two and nine a season ago, two and six inside the section. They were able to figure things out this year, up to six wins, a much larger roster, not a lot of returning players, as I believe it was just four for this Carmichael's team coming back into this season, but you know, it's a good, talented group of sophomores, and then they're led by a star-studded junior in Sophia Zalar, who's definitely going to be the player the Doors have to watch in this game. And, you know, the Carmichael's coaching staff is well prepared for that. They're expecting defensively, and they've been practicing it to go against a box-in-one defense. That's what they think the Commodores are going to throw at them here this evening, box-in-one, see what they can do, and see if... They can find a way to shut down Zaylers. You know, two different styles of offense, two different styles of play. You have the Frazier Commodores with Delaney Warnick and Eliza Newcomer. They like to get to the rim, get to the cylinder, easy buckets from in close. And then on the other side for the Lady Mikes, they like to shoot outside beyond the perimeter in that mid-range game as well. So both teams, you know, thrive with the other 
has is a weakness. Right, and it's going to be eager to see how teams respond to junk defenses like that. I, I forget who it was this year I saw that a team played a box and one, and they brought that one player and just sat her at the half court line, and they played four on four. And it really allowed them to open up things, get a lot of open space on the court, and uh, get to the rim that way. But does do the Carmichael's Mighty Mikes, do they have enough scoring talent around to be able to do that? Or do you have to kind of have some kind of junk offense to kind of circumvent that junk defense that Frazier could play? But they might not. They might sit back in a zone. They might come out in a 3-2 zone. We ne you never know. Yeah, it, I think if they do find a way to neutralize Zalar, which is a big task at hand, you're going to have to see the likes of Voidhopper, a returning sophomore, step up. You're also going to need the, the senior Mejia to step up, who wasn't a part of this team last year, as it's a very young team on both sides of things, a couple of seniors, but the majority of these teams are underclassmen in the starting lineup, and, you know, this group of sophomores, you know, last year their coach gave them a ton of high praise, saying they all work hard, they all listen well, have good ball handling skills, and have good shots, and it's just the game experience that they needed and that's what they've started to gain into this second year. And I think why you see the team switch from 2-9 and nine to 6-12. and 12. Still not where they want to be. But you look at even next year, no matter what happens today. You have Zaylar back. You have Simon back. You have Voidhofer back. And you have Betas back, who was four of your five starters. And Mejia was kind of a plug-and-play this year. Right. And that's the biggest thing. You can't do everything all at once. You you go from two wins, you jump up to six. That's a what? That's a two hundred percent increase in your win total. You do that next year, you're at twelve wins. You know, so it's it's going to be a slow but steady pace, and that's the same thing we're looking at here at Frazier with Kenny Johnson. Yeah, absolutely. And I think obviously you're going to have those top two teams with Sarah and Seton LaSalle, number three and number five respectively, inside the postseason bracket, but then. Once you get, I think, to next year or even the year after, especially with Kendall Weston leaving California after this year, that number three, four spot, that's going to be a death match between California, Frazier, and Carmichael's, I think, right. for the next few years, especially with what those teams are returning and losing on their each given side. Right. And you never know what realignment's going to bring next year as well. No, absolutely. So, so I mean, it could throw a whole wrench right. into the grand scheme of it all, but... I mean, you know, maybe they get away from Seton LaSalle and Sarah Catholic in the section, you know, then you you might be looking at a section with other teams that, you know, maybe you're the second or third place team. Yeah, absolutely. It's all about growing and getting better, and that's what both of these teams are looking to do, and both of them are looking to get that playoff win. First appearance in the postseason since 2014 for Carmichael's. So it's been a while. They haven't won since that year as well. Frazier, they have not won since 2015 when they beat Apollo Ridge. That was my senior year of high school. They won that game at Yacht because we'll keep it here for the playing of the national anthem right here on the Trib Live High School Sports Network. Anthem is played, lineups are next, and then it's the doors and the mics right here on the Trib Live High School Sports Network, MVI Live crew calling the action for you here in the first round, the preliminary round of the postseason. 
as the starting lineups. First for the visiting Carmichael Mighty Mikes, six and 12 overall, three and seven out of two A section two. They're gonna look at a lineup that is as followed as it's going to be the 5-4 sophomore point guard, Elena Simon. Joining her will be the 5-8 junior forward, Sophia Zaylar. 18 points a game for Zaylar. And it's going to be the 5-6 sophomore guard, Megan Voithofer. Joining them will be the 5-6 freshman, Ashton Batis. And rounding out the starting five will be the 5-6 senior, Emily Mejia. So make that Simon, Zaylar, Voithofer, Batis, and Mejia, the starting five for the Carmichael's Mighty Mikes. That is, as you can see, one senior, one junior, a so pair of sophomores, and a freshman. As we'll switch things over in just a moment to take a look at the home stars. But Zaylar, definitely the big one to have circled on your scorecard if you're the Commodores that you have to shut down. It's absolutely right. And the thing is... You know, it, it's it's interesting because, like you say, these two teams know each other from section play. They played each other twice. There's, they're not hiding anything from each other now. You know each other. Absolutely it's just not. a matter of going out and see who controls the turnovers, who forces more turnovers, and obviously who can score one more point than the other one. As we'll take a look at the starting lineups for the Frazier Commodores, led under first-year head coach Kenny Johnson, 7-14 and 14 overall. Three and seven as well. In 2A section two, it's going to be the 5-2 sophomore guard, Elizabeth Santo. 5-5 junior guard, Maria Felscher. Joining them will be the 5-6 sophomore forward, Taylor Hazelbaker. 5-9 junior forward, Delaney Warnick. And the six-foot senior forward going to Penn College. That is Eliza Newcomer. So that is Santo, Felscher, Hazelbaker, Warnick, and Newcomer. The starting five for Frazier. And they went a good portion of this season without probably their best player this season. That is Delaney Warnick. First time I was here when they took on Schaller, I didn't have the privilege of watching Delaney play. But that's a huge added bonus for the Commodores getting her back for this postseason game. And especially it opens everything up for Eliza Newcomer underneath. But as you mentioned, they played before. They split the season series. So I love that this is what the WPIL did. Okay, an extra team got in out of 2A Section 2. Right. Who really deserves it? Go out, play again. You're battling for that number 16 seed against the old Chargers. And to be honest, I don't think out of all the pigtail prelim games we have, that's the worst opponent. I think, to be honest, that's right. who I'd want to play out of the top three seeds. Absolutely. I yeah, mean, I don't want to go to Neshanik. I don't want to go see Chloe Portash and Sarah Catholic. Right. As it's going to be Zaylar taking the opening tip with Eliza Newcomer. The Commodores, the home whites, the red and black trim. The Navy uniforms with gold numbers and, or gold lettering and white numerals for the Mighty Mikes is driving in, putting it up and knocking down the first shot of the game was the Mighty Mikes is sending it through was Betis the freshman. Foul off the inbound is the guilty party. Simon got a little too handsy. 2-0 the Mighty Mikes lead. 7.47 remaining in the first. Into the press once again goes Carmichael's. And that's one thing for Carmichael's not very deep. I mean, yeah, you have five bodies on the bench. But how much experience do you have over there? You do not want to get in foul trouble. Eliza Newcomer tries to back it in. No good. Rebound Warnick. Delaney Warnick puts it up and puts it in. Warnick ties things up at two. Two all, 7.27 remaining in the first. Betis a little too ahead of herself, and that's the tie-up. Commodore basketball after that one off the dual possession inbound. Near side right in front of us, court side. And it's going to be Maria Felscher, the junior, doing the honors with two or 7.23 remaining in the first. And we saw that's going to be the difference on the games. Can Carmichael's keep up with Newcomer and Warnick on the boards? As Betis with the steal and Betis fouled in transition by Santo. That's her first, team first. As a bunch of quick whistles early on. 7.17 remaining in the first. We're tied at two between the Mighty Mikes and the Frazier Commodores.
Mejia far side. Mejia puts it on the floor, dribbling up and a foul underneath. It's going to be Felcher. Kenny Johnson not oh. happy with that one. No, that, yeah. no, that went against Zalar. They gave it to Zaylor. That's going to be her first. Two fouls against the Mighty Mikes. I'm surprised uh, Coach Johnson seemed upset there getting the foul called in his favor. Maria Felsher over the divider, spinning her way, top of the key. Felsher out to Santo. Santo back up top. Santo down low, Delaney Warnick. Warnick skips it underneath. Newcomer blocked. Second effort, Newcomer puts it in. Eliza Newcomer gives the doors the first lead of the game. Simmon far side, Zaylor walking in. Zaylor floats it up, back iron and in. And the Mike Santa right back. And a whistle right after a 30 second timeout called by the Commodores. Yeah, Coach Kenny Johnson obviously saw something right away that he wants to fix. He might have figured out what the Mike's offense is doing. Again, like we said, there's there's no secrets here between these two teams that play each other, have played each other twice already. Yeah, no room for error either. Winner or loser, you're done. You're on the couch next week versus a chance to play against Olsh one more time. And, you know, from an outside perspective, when I would look at the brackets before I was playing, I was like, I, I never really, why would you want to go play that last game? Got to my senior year, we had a chance if we won to go play number one Aliquippa. And right. You better believe I wanted to be in that game even though I knew what was going to happen. Well, and like we said during our breakdown show, you get a whole other couple days with your players and it's only going to help when you're uh, yeah. Delaney Warnick with the travel and a turnover for the Commodores tied at 4, 6.25 remaining in the first Emily Mejia will inbound on the near side backcourt she goes, that's the Betis the freshman over the divider, Betis right wing, drives in, right block, puts it up she's fouled by Eliza Newcomer Newcomer's first, team second here in the first quarter Shooting at the line for the first time today. Either side will be Ashton Betis. Scored the inaugural two points of this one. Betis puts it up off the back iron. No good. Before last year, Frazier won 10 in a row against Carmichael's. Eight and two in the last 10 meetings. As that one rims out, no good. Rebound Eliza Newcomer. Bounce pass comes Maria Felsher. Felsher almost lost the handle driving in. Felsher stops up. Felsher. Mac up top and a foul. Oh. It looks like Betis maybe, or no, yeah, that called foul. And stepped that's out a, of and another thing we want to, you know, haven't mentioned. You know, you've only had a few practices with this ball, playoff right. basketballs. So you know, I've seen a couple times players lose the handle of the ball on both sides, and you got to think that's part of, you know, what it is. Is Delaney Warnick the steal? Warnick. Going the distance, down low, Hazelbaker back to Warnick, off the window and in. Delaney up the four, the doors up the six. Betis looking to answer. Off of Zalar, Zalar picks it up, guarded by McGavitt, skips it across Mejia, Mejia right wing, back up top. Foul line floater, blocked, blocked down by Warnick. by Warnick. And here comes Santo, as Santo had it knocked free and the travel called. Nothing really Elizabeth Santo could do that time by. 6-4, Frazier leads, 5.35 remaining in the first. More pressure here from the Commodores. Inbound far side, Voidhofer into Betis. Betis near side and taking up his Simon back to Betis. Knocked free again by Warnick, but right to Mejia. Betis, left wing, a back up top Simon. Simon surveys her option, calling for help. Bounce pass in, taken away. That's by Newcomer with some help from Taylor Hazelbaker. Near side, Santo over the divider. Santo to Warnick inside. Newcomer up around the cylinder. No good. Second time, Newcomer's fouled. Yeah, they're going to give a jump ball. She was... I, I agree. I thought it was a foul, but they gave her, they gave her a jump ball from behind. I'm sorry with Eliza Newcomer having... Uh, about two to three inches on everybody, especially with that long length, and went straight back up. I don't know how you get a tie up there. But nonetheless, as we get a travel in, the basketball right goes right back to the Commodores. You know what they say, uh, Jeremy, basketball doesn't lie. Right. So Delaney Warnick out, Maria Felsher back in. 
Frazier has dominated on the glass so far in this game. 5.03 remaining. McGavitt changing directions. Lost the handle. Gets it back. McGavitt out to Hazelbaker. Newcomer wants it. Hazelbaker drives in. Tried to float it down. And she's pushed. She's going to go against Simon. Both teams already with four turnovers. Simon with two fouls already. Maria Felsher the trigger. Felsher has Santo and said there's Newcomer puts it up no good. Rebound off of McGavitt. Saved by Newcomer but right to Zalar. She's not going to stop. Zalar coast to coast and Felsher draws the contact. Maria Felsher got to the spot and Zalar gets number two. Oh, uh-uh. Yeah. Zalar got two fouls. Good say, job was, by was, Felsher. It was a pretty, I thought, a fat it going down. I didn't see the quick point by the official. I just saw him point to that the ball was going to be out of bounds. Great job by Felsher getting to the spot and getting the leading scorer for the Mighty Mikes, her second foul. Off of Mejia, out of bounds, and the Mighty Mikes bench not happy about that sequence. It's Frazier, a chance to set up in the offensive zone. They'll bring Delaney Warnick back in. She will replace Newcomer. First time we see Addison Day, she comes in in replace of Elizabeth Santo. Felsher, the trigger, once again, looks for an option, doesn't have much. Kick out, Hazel Baker, catch, release, back iron, no good. Zaylar. Rebound out of bounds. Zaylar's very lucky she didn't get a third. She looked like she went over the back there, but she quickly pulled those hands back. 6 4. 4.33 remaining in the first. The door's on top of the Lady Mikes. Steal by Delaney Warnick. Warnick around one. Warnick straight to the rim. Up off the glass and one. Delaney Warnick up to six. The lead up to four for Frazier. Warnick's looking for one more. Delaney Warnick looking for the old school three-point play. Excellent softball player for Frazier. Played third base last year. Maybe switching across the diamond this year. We'll see a lot of her that's, come. That's spring. what I hear. She's going across. I was the first one on that. And I have I have audio proof when I interviewed uh, Donnie and asked him about it. We have a timeout taken by Carmichael's here. 424 to go. 9-4, Frazier leads. And this gives us an opportunity to remind you that this game and the broadcast rights of this game are the sole and exclusive property of the WPIAL and Trip Total Media along with us here at MBI Live. Any broadcast of this game is intended exclusively for the benefit of the viewing and listening audience. Any use, rebroadcast or distribution of this broadcast without the express written consent from the WPIAL and Trip Total Media is strictly prohibited. You know, I have the sheet here, Jeremy, but I can see that in my sleep the amount of times I've had to read it absolutely without a doubt and of course we're grateful for the trip to have us on as an affiliate and oh absolutely be able to continue covering our teams big shout out again Justin LaBar Don Rebel Chris Lackner their technical producer making this all possible for us as a steal by Felsher Felsher back the other way turnover it's Mejia Mejia to Zaylar. Zaylar has helped. She takes it herself now, floats it across, putting it up no good. Betis rebound Mejia as Zaylar head up a little late. That would have been an easy bucket. Now Voidhofer drives in. She's fouled. Zaylar should have just taken that one herself. At that point, you either got to pass that early or take it all the way. Once she got in deep, that allowed everyone to regroup. Voidhofer will be the second Mighty Mike to the line this evening. Foul one against McGavitt, I believe. As Whitehopper drains it. Her first bucket of the game. 9-5 score. Santo, newcomer back in. Day and Hazelbaker out. Foul was against McGavitt, as you mentioned, Jeremy. Voidhofer, iron very kind. Gets the roll. Gets her second point of the game, making it a three-point deficit with 3.48 and counting here in the first quarter. Santo couldn't hold the pivot foot, turns it over. The name sounds familiar to all those Frazier faithful, brother uh, or sister of 1,000-point scorer Luke Santo, who was part of that section championship run for the boys a season ago. Good hands by Newcomer, and she's going to pick up a foul. That will be Eliza's second foul of the game. 
So we've already seen three starters with two fouls here in the first quarter, and we still have 337 remaining. Bateman's going to check in for a newcomer. Taryn Bateman, 5'8", sophomore. Actually, I think Bateman's a freshman. I think I have that written down wrong. As a travel called on Simon. Is, when I used to sub here, she was part of that eighth grade class I was in a ton with last year. So, Get seven, that right. seven turnovers now already for the Mikes. 9-6 lead in favor of Frazier. Santo barking out the orders. There's McGavitt. McGavitt, foul line, lost it. It's Betis back the other way. Here comes Betis. Betis drives in, right block, lays it up. And an offensive, or a no. defensive foul on Felsher, I should say, as Felsher sliding the feet a little bit as Betis drove in. The basket was good. Betis up to four, lead down to one. And now it's a tie game at nine. Old school three-point play for the freshman Betis. See if the Commodores can answer back. Nine all in the first quarter. Down low, Aaron pass taken away, Mejia. Mejia near side and a foul called on Santo. That's her second. Santo's problem is she's just picking up her dribble. Hazel Baker will replace Santo. Betis up over the divider. Betis bounce pass far side. Voidhofer underneath blocked by Warnick. Delaney Warnick floats it up ahead. There's Felsher drives in left block layup. She's fouled. She'll shoot a pair looking to give the doors the lead I think back. That's going to be three on Simon. 6th foul, and it is for the team third on Simon, as you mentioned. Felsher rims it out, no good. Another one of those multi-sport athletes for Frazier's Felsher as Simon out. Plavi in. Felsher for the lead. She'll send it through. The door's the first to ten. Two fifty-three remaining in the opening quarter. 10-9 lead for Frazier. Betis near side, Mejia. Mejia top of the key, floats it far side. That one connects into the corner. Voidhofer puts it up, back iron, no good. Rebound, Zaylar comes up short. Grab down, knocked out of the hands of Hazel Baker. Hazel Baker, the last to touch. So the Mikes have possession once more with 2.37 remaining in the first. 10-9 lead in favor of Frazier over Carmichael's. Third meeting this season, the teams have split. Driving in, floater up, Zaylar, she's fouled. But neither team's going to have any players left pretty soon. I think that's going to be the second on McGavitt. That is the seventh team foul on Frazier. Zaylar sends it up, sends it through. Zaylar up to three. We're tied at 10 once more. The leading score for the Mighty Mikes. Coach says she gives 110% really wherever you ask her to do in practice in the game, and it's paid off this season. She goes two for two. The Mikes have their first lead since 2-0. Hazelbaker has a lane, drives in. Hazelbaker knocked out of her hands by Mejia. So the doors will inbound down to our left with 2.28 remaining in the first. An 11-10 lead for Carmichael's. They're already in the bonus for the rest of the first half, and we still, as I mentioned, 228 remaining. Inbound. Warnick back up top. Hazel Baker. Hazel Baker driving. Hazel Baker needs an outlet. Bounce pass to Bateman. Taryn Bateman drives in. Kick out far side. Felsher puts it up. No good. Rebound. Warnick on the putback won't fall. Now it's McGavitt's turn, but she travels on the rebound. I don't know, man. Another Valley uh, guy in the house, uh, Daniel Gordon of the Belle Vernon Boys team showing up here this evening. Also seeing Hewitt of the California girls. So Valley faithful all around, making some presence felt here as this 
prelim game taking place. Void Hoffer puts it up, no good. Rebound, grab down McGavitt, up to Felsher. If you're Frazier, I feel like you gotta find Zaylar and attack her. See if you can get her number three in here in the first as a dual possession Frazier maintains with 150 remaining in the first. And I think the other thing too is Frazier, they're looking like they're gonna attack, but then they pull the ball out. Just keep attacking the hoop, especially the way the referees are loving their whistles tonight. I mean, you just go and, and see if you get a foul. Taylor Hazelbaker off the inbound, gets onto the board, and the doors back up by one with 142 remaining in the first. Betis, bounce pass near side, Mejia floats it in. That's Betis putting it up, and Santo jumped up and picks up her third here in the first. Second player to have three fouls in the first quarter. Bad night to wear number three. Both players wearing that number picked up three first quarter fouls already. Yeah, it's uh, not a good situation for either one of these teams, honestly. Off the mark is Betis. That's her third miss from the line. She's now one for four. Santo out. Addison Day in. That one rims out as well. Rebound McGavitt. Frazier has been dominant on the boards here in this one. Even without Eliza Newcomer in the game, who Frazier definitely does not want to pick up her third. As driving in, Hazelbaker no good. Rebound, Warnick. Warnick off the window, no good. Rebound, pinball's free. Taken out by Bateman. Now it's through the hands of McGavitt. McGavitt, far side. Gabriella McGavitt drives in. McGavitt floats it up and floats it in. That's exactly what I said they gotta do. Just keep attacking the basket. Girls are gonna move out of the way because they don't wanna get another foul. Void for make that Zaylar pulls up for three, buries it. And we're tied again. Seven for Zaylar. Under a minute to play in the first. Hazel Baker. Needs help. She picked up her dribble. Warnick. Backing down. Mahia. She got too far underneath, but the put back. It's Bateman. Taryn Bateman gives the doors the lead once again. 30 seconds remaining in the first. As we went back and forth, no team's been able to grab a real edge. Shot up and a foul, and that's on Delaney Warnick as she knocked down Betis. That will be Delaney's second foul, or first, excuse me, unless I missed writing it down. We have. That is her first. We have Frazier out rebounding the mics right now, 11 to 3. Betis sends that one through. She's up to six points. Gets another shot, sending it the first half of the end one. Knocks down both. Tie us up at 16. Seven for the freshman Betis. A little far, but Warnick reels it in. Warnick straight to the cylinder, knocked out of her hands and out. They say last touch by Frazier. And head coach Kenny Johnson of the Commodores very upset, saying there was a deflection. 16's on the clock, or on the board, 13 on the clock. Carmichael is most likely holding for one. Voidhofer sends it out off the backboard. That gives the Commodores a chance to take the lead before the first quarter break. Felsher will check back in, replacing Bateman. See if they try to run some sort of pass pattern here down the court. Warnick going to run that way. That's the offense. It's in. Warnick, the touch clock runs. Lays it up and in. Delaney Warnick from Felsher at the buzzer. Great job there. Warnick just beating everybody down the floor. You got the two softball players hooking up, so you know they could throw it that far. You kind of thought that had to be the sequence. Would they try to throw a bit of a Hail Mary in? That was a perfectly placed pass by Maria well, Felsher. And the other key was Warnick didn't touch it. Yeah, she it, waited. That ball bounced by the three-point line. She let it take another bounce so she could get better position. And that clock didn't start until she touches it. Yeah, and that was heads-up play by Delaney Warnick giving the Commodores the two-point advantage after one. It will be Mighty Mike's basketball to start the quarter. They trail 18-16 after one, but again, both meetings have been close this year, 51-46. The Mighty Mikes won at home, Frazier won at home, 49-40. 
before last year. The last time Carmichael's beat Frazier was 2012-13. Again, even though Frazier's made 11 straight playoffs and Carmichael's hasn't made the postseason since 2014, their last time with a playoff win is just one year apart. Frazier, they may have got there. They have not had the success. The last team to win was the, the combination of Cassidy Geyser, Jamie Muccioli, mm -hmm. along with Hannah Klein and Alina Blaschek, who is really the reason Frazier was able to win that game. Far side, that's Betis. Betis bounce pass, drive, or thought about the bounce pass, drove in. Void Hoffer off the deflection, knocked out. Mighty Mike basketball, 7.40 remaining in the second. Commodores ended that first quarter with nine turnovers. Carmichael's with only seven. But again, we talked about the Commodores just dominating on the, on the glass. Newcomer back in to start here. Remember, she has two fouls. Addison Day, the freshman, pulls down the rebound. Turns it over there. There goes Zaylar up off the window and in to tie us up at 18. Nine points for Sophia Zaylar. Coast to coast for McGavitt. Too strong, and it's swatted out of bounds by Zaylar. 7-18 remaining here in quarter number two. Bright side, we haven't had a foul call in the first 42 seconds. Inbound, Hazel Baker back out. There's Felsher. Maria Felsher in the left side. Felsher picks up her dribble, sends it into Newcomer. Eliza Newcomer looks to penetrate. Newcomer back up top to Felsher. Felsher near side, Hazel Baker. Hazel Baker deep for two. Back iron, no good. Rebound. No good by Newcomer, dribbles it out, kicks it back to Felsher. Felsher, foul line pass, Hazel Baker up, back iron, no good. Another rebound by Newcomer, and she's got a foul. pulled down to the floor, and they call the tie-up. No, one referee called the foul. This lady called the jump ball, and they're going to give him the jump ball. And I think the reason Newcomer didn't get the foul, she brought the ball back mm -hmm. down. you got to keep that up high and put it up as soon as you make contact because you're either eventually going to make it or get fouled as McGavitt, Pulls the trigger, no good, long rebound, handled, and a foul called on McGavitt That's as she falls, fouls Zaylar, who will go all the way down to shoot. I believe this is double bonus for Carmichael's, and it will be for Sophia Zaylar, who is two for two. Looking to get to 10 points and give the Mikes the lead once more. Zaylar through the motion with the right hand, puts it up, sends it through, giving her double digits with 10. First player either side to reach that feat. Bateman will check in. She will replace McGavitt. Delaney Warnick back in as well. Everything stays the same for the Mighty Mikes from Carmichael's. Shot up and in. Zaylar stays true from the line, giving her 11. 2018, here comes Hazel Baker. Hazel Baker stops up inside. Newcomer backing down, puts it up, and she's fouled. That's, That's number three. three on Zaylar. And you got to see, does this force the hand of the Mighty Mike's head coach? Does she keep Zaylar in the game? I mean, you, it's iffy. You almost have to, right? She's scoring all your points. She has all but seven. Or excuse me, nine. Zaylar or Betis has seven. The other two belong to Voidhofer. Newcomer off on the first. The Penn College commit puts it up, comes up short again. Here comes Betis back the other way. Zaylar is staying in for the moment. Driving in Felsher, ricochets it away, and that one's knocked out by Zaylar. And if they keep Zaylar on Newcomer, you got to feed it right back into your six foot senior. Absolutely. Press will come off Looks as like Hazel Baker is going to be able to walk it in. I would even be iffy about leaving Zaylor on that right side where most of these right-handed dominant girls are going to go. Newcomer had her posted up, and that's just an errant play by Bateman, the freshman. But a steal taken by Hazel Baker. See if they get it back up top to Felcher. They will. Newcomer wants it. Newcomer has it. Goes up on Zaylor, and she's blocked. But again, I like the sequence because... Yes. 
either Zaylar is going to back off, give you a bucket, or eventually pick up that fourth foul. As a turnover, there's Felsher. Simon in there as well, playing with three fouls. Felsher guarded by Simon, picks up the dribble, needs help inside Bateman. Bateman, double dribble, and we'll go back the other way. 2018, your score in favor of the Mighty Mikes. As Day will check in, and the first time today, Emma Cortina will check in. Far side, Boyd Hopper back to Mejia. Mejia skips it all the way across. Now driving in, Betis puts it up, no good. Rebound, Voight Hopper and the tie up forced by Newcomer. That gives the Mikes the ball once more underneath, but it switches the arrow on the far side. Yeah, Betis went in and kind of just slipped. I know that Carmichael's crowd wanted a foul, but she slipped on her end there. Nearing three minutes of play without a Commodore bucket. Voight Hopper, pressured by Hazelbaker, got to Zaylar. Zaylar skips it across. Mejia thought about the two. Now it's Zaylar for two. That one no good. Rebound, Voight Hopper. Voight Hopper back to Mejia. Mejia to Betis into the corner. That's Voight Hopper. Voight Hopper. Far side, Zaylar. Zaylar gets it back. A little catch with Betis. Zaylar driving in. Bounce pass, Betis. Right corner back to Zaylar up top, they reset the offense with Voidhofer. Now it's Mejia, the senior. Floats it to Betis, far side. Betis, bounce pass out. Zaylar drives in. Zaylar puts it up, and that one off the front iron and in. Give her 13. Increasing the Mike's lead up to four. That's their largest margin of lead here in this game. Hazel Baker. Day back to Hazelbaker. Far side, Cortina puts it up. Cortina high off the glass, no good. Rebound back down by Mejia. Far side, Voidhofer. Voidhofer slowing things down halfway through the second. The Commodores have not scored since the buzzer beater by Delaney Warnick. You thought that might give him a spark coming into this quarter. It has not. Simon throws it through the hands of Betis and out, and Frazier gets it back. So far, so good on Carmichael's playing the three girls with three fouls. But I think it's been more because Frazier keeps turning the ball over every time they get to their end of the floor. Foul will go against the Mighty Mikes. And it's going to go against Betis. Betis, her first. That's a rare thing to say here in this one, it feels like. Bateman in. Santo will come out. Shooting will be McGavitt. It's one and one. If McGavitt makes both, Day will come in. Yeah, you need these baskets right here if you're the Commodores. You need to make their... Or you could do it that way. Now Warnick got knocked down, rebound grabbed away, and back the other way come the Mighty Mikes, and that's out of bounds off of Zaylar on the near side. And they're giving that to Carmichael, because that was right in front of us. Didn't that hit the leg of Zaylar? I thought it did, yeah. Just making sure I'm not going crazy. I know I do wear glasses, but. Yeah, I thought it did go off of Zaylar. Nonetheless, the Commodores will set things up defensively. Warnick the deflection out. And now the Mighty Mikes will try once more. Frazier got to find a way to get a stop and get a score here as they've gone ice cold here in the second quarter. They have not scored since the end of the first. 3.28 remaining here in the second. Luckily for them, just eight points for the Mighty Mikes. Boyd Hoffer looking to increase that. She's off the mark, rebound and a foul. As Hazelbaker kind of just was leaning on the shooter, Betis. Taylor Hazelbaker gets her first. And shooting two will be Betis. And that's a difference here, too. Carmichael's is making their free throws. Frazier, not so much. Betis wraps in another. Another. 
Frazier 0 for 3 in free throws this quarter. And they are scoreless off the deflection out of bounds. Your Frazier got to work into the hands of Warnick or Newcomer. You got to work it somewhere else. Every time they're going to that right side of the floor and Carmichael's knows what's coming. Hazel Baker drives in, bounce pass. Warnick goes up, she's fouled, go. gets the bucket. Delaney Warnick up to 11 in a much needed bucket for the Commodores. They get to 20. Foul goes, wait to see, they don't have a number up there yet. As off the mark for the rebound, grabbed by Frazier. There's Addison Day. Day, bounce pass in, driving up, newcomer knocked out. Hazel Baker finds it, Hazel Baker tied up, and the arrow will go to our right. It's one thing they teach, that's why they teach you, if you get hands in there, you gotta rip that ball. If Hazel Baker gets that ball and spins to her right a little bit, that hand comes off and you have the ball. Through the motions, the doors go. It's Taryn Bateman. Bateman to Hazel Baker. Hazel Baker to Bateman. Bateman out to Day. Day tries to penetrate, kicks it near side. Hazel Baker. Newcomer wants it, but she's sandwiched. Inside they go. Newcomer picks it up. Newcomer up off the glass. No good. Rebound, Eliza. Newcomer one dribble. Up and in. Down to a two point game. Eight rebounds now already for Hazel or for Newcomer. And seven of those are on the offensive glass. Boyd Hoffer up, no good. Rebound put back off the bottom of the backboard. That was by Betis. Newcomer grabbed it down and back the other way. Here comes Hazel Baker. Hazel Baker drives in, up off the iron, no good. Rebound knocked out. Last touch by the Mighty Mike, subbing in for the first time today will be the 5'10 freshman forward, Allie Jacobs. Mosher will join the party as well for Day. And for Frazier, I mean... Just shoot the ball. Because even if you miss, chances are really high that you're going to get the rebound. <laughs> Fosher sends order in motion. There in the newcomer too strong. Rebound, kick out. Hazel Baker, yes, as she banks it in for the tie. Four for Hazel Baker. And if Frazier makes their layups in this game, they're probably leading by seven or eight, to be honest. Yeah. And Carmichael's, they've taken advantage of those misses thus far. Near side, Beta. She's been one of the two leading the charge offensively. Near side, Voidhofer. Voidhofer, and that's a foul. Travel. I'm sorry. That, that, I blame that on Jensen. There's yeah. Jensen Hartman coming over there poking me in the arm while I'm trying to call a game. It's always Which those Hartman kids. Far side, Felsher in the left wing, up top, Warnick, near side, Hazel Baker for two, buries it again! Taylor, Hazel Baker up to six. And the run. Mikes, they're talking things over. 8 0 run for the Commodores, gets them right back into the lead, 26 24. Frazier, out of nowhere, they were ice cold, couldn't. Hit the broad side of a barn. All of a sudden, the offense is rolling once more. Two for Newcomer, two for Warnick, four for Hazel Baker. And that's what the doors needed to get right back in this thing. They want a chance at number one, Olsh. As Taryn Bateman will be the lone door applying light pressure. And now moving up to the foul line will be, or the half court line, excuse me, will be Hazel Baker and Felsher as pass goes to Betis, back to Mejia, guarded by Taryn Bateman. The key here is Frazier has to take advantage because Zaylar is on the bench. So you can't do that. You gotta make them earn every point. And Carmichael has a chance to get some easy points with the clock stopped. And it's gonna be a girl who's been pretty good as of late. That's Betis. Betis is five for five from the line. Up and in, Betis up to 10 points. She's made now her last five. Also the traditional three point play, make it six in a row from the stripe for Betis. We're tied again at 26. 
Hazel Baker. She's played a crucial part in the offense here in this quarter. Driving in, there's Felsher out to Newcomer up top. Now it's Hazel Baker. Hazel Baker up top, Felsher. All sorts of room from 16 out. Off the iron and in for Maria Felsher. Give Maria three. Give the doors the two point advantage. 50 on the clock. Far side it goes. Up top, Mejia. Mejia near side. Betis with the triple. Got it. And the lead back to the Mighty Mikes. 14 for the freshman Betis. Hazel Baker to Felsher. Frazier down by one now. It's Bateman to Hazel Baker. Hazel Baker travels. And the Mighty Mikes a chance to increase upon their lead before the half. Over the divider. Far side, Mejia kicks it. Simon drives in, pulls up, extended post, no good. Rebound saved by Betis. Now it's Mejia with eight. Back, gets it back from Simon and a travel to Frazier Commodores. Once again with under seven on the clock and a chance to increase their point total before the break. As with 2.7 in the first quarter, they got a shot. They made the Mighty Mikes pay. They'll look to do that once again for the second straight quarter, trying to take the lead at the buzzer. 5.3, Hazel Baker now down to two with one. McGavitt way off the mark. And the Mighty Mikes lead at the break. 29, 28, Frazier adds in 10 that quarter. Carmichael's 13 to take the lead. At the half over the Frazier Commodores. Free throws have been big in this one. 13 points from the charity stripe for Carmichael's. Frazier has all of two. Yeah, we talked about the free throw shooting. We talked about the turnovers right now. Carmichael's winning that battle. They have 12 compared to 14 for Frazier. But the difference for Frazier has been those putbacks on the on the offensive glass. Frazier with one, two, three, four. I got him with 12 offensive rebounds so far in this game. And I only have Carmichael's with about eight rebounds total. So, so far so good for Frazier on the glass. And like I said, best thing they could do is just keep shooting. Chances are high that if you miss the shot, you're still going to have an opportunity with an offensive rebound. And we'll see what the second half has in store. But when we come back, it's a old but good halftime interview. As this will be the last time we'll see this one next week. Uh, if you're tuning in, we'll have an interview with Bell Vernon head coach, Joe Salvino. So that's going to be a fun one you don't want to miss. But until then, when we come back, it's going to be an interview with a section mate of these two teams in Chloe Portash right here on the Trib Live High School Sports Network. Doreen, Doreen Walter, your full-time realtor and a master certified negotiating expert. One of the most positively reviewed agents on Zillow in southwestern Pennsylvania with the best marketing and maximum exposure and a lifelong resident of the Mon Valley. If you're looking for handmade gifts this season, check out Chloe and Lee Candles. All of their products are made in-house since 2014. Their waxes are a proprietary blend of soy, paraffin, coconut, and corn. And they use cotton core wicks and phthalate free oils. Their body products are made with the finest quality oils, butters, and salts for your skin. Check them out at 205 West Main Street in Monongahela or call 724-298-8696. Stop on down to Hills Restaurant Main Street in New Eagle. Serving breakfast, lunch, and dinner, dine in or take out. Online ordering now available at hills-restaurant.com. Hills Restaurant, the best kept secret in the valley. You can call them at 724-258-5422. Itty Bitty Treasures and more at Riverside Village Shops for something extra special. Memory domes, engraving, awards, screen printing, embroidery, gifts, and so much more. Riverside Village Shops located at 127 Spear Street, in Bell Vernon. 
Come to Dragimbo Motors, a top-rated Pittsburgh area dealership for over 55 years to actually enjoy car buying. From their extensive high-quality selection of cars, SUVs, and trucks, you'll receive personal care and attention and enjoy your experience at Dragimbo Motors of Bentleyville. Visit their website at TregimboMotors.com or visit them at 125 Wilson Road in Bentleyville. Back here at the half on MVI Live. This week we are joined by Sarah Catholic's very own Chloe Portash, who has been off to a spectacular season with her team. You got your first loss of the year against Belvern, another Valley team, a very good Valley team. And we'll talk about that a little first. How does that, in a sense, help you guys as a team who's been so good all year to kind of get a slap in the face? You know, honestly, um, <laughs> I think we kind of needed it. Um, we were kind of like blowing out teams left and right, and it was like we wanted some competition. We even said it at practice. Like we have our assistant coaches like play against us, and they're really good. And like we lose to them sometimes. And it's like it was so nice finally having someone else kind of beat us instead of like our coaches or ourselves beating ourselves. That's what kind of happened on Wednesday night that we kind of beat ourselves. So. And, but, you know, yeah. it's a tough classification. You're in, you're in a mm -hmm. tough section in a sense with U and C. Yeah. A, to a top yeah. two teams. I shouldn't say a yeah. tough section. Everyone else kind of well behind you guys. But a tough classification with the yeah. likes of Nashank. You have the No Gage. Mm -hmm. You have Haggerty on that team. And that's a team who also just got a loss to Olsh. They did, yeah. So how much does that – obviously, you guys have probably goals of getting past them this year, especially after what they did to mm -hmm. you guys last year. So how does that kind of give you guys maybe visions? Okay, is this 2 A section truly now wide open? Yeah, so actually us starters, like, have a little group chat by ourselves, and um, we were talking about it last night. Like, I, I called him up. I was like, no way Nishanik just lost. And uh, we were, like, talking about it for a little bit. So, I mean, that kind of fired us up a little bit, you know. We were uh, we were pretty excited about it. We were like, because, I mean, if Olsh can beat them, I think we can. So. You, you guys have a lot of depth. You have a we lot do. of you know really good scoring but the one thing you lack in anything as your team is experience mm -hmm. and how have you been able to as in a sense the lone return you're a four-year starter now as a senior been able to take over that leadership role with this young group of players who have been outstanding as well you know before the season started i kind of like back not that he told me that they were starting but like i kind of figured i put two and two together and, like, I grabbed him and I pulled him aside. I'm like, listen, you guys got to, like, I'm going to tell you things and you're going to have to listen to me. Like, I've been through, like, I played in that Winchester game last year. I, I've been through the rough. You just got to listen. And, they, ha I mean, I give them credit. They have been. For four sophomores starting with a senior, I give them credit. <laughs> yeah, they, they've looked very impressive for mm -hmm. what they've been able to do and what you guys have been able to do this season. And, you know, I've seen you play a little bit, saw you play last year. Saw you play during the summer now this year. And, you know, one thing with you, you're, you let your emotions shown on your sleeve. But mm -hmm. in the games I've seen this year, you found ways, it looks like, to almost tame that back and not let it get you into trouble. How have you been able to kind of control it? Because emotion's not bad. Yeah. That, that's a good thing, and it's a good thing in a sense you let it be shown, but it's that you don't get yourself in trouble with it as much anymore. It's more of like a, okay, I'm going to go play in college and – my college coach doesn't want me to do that, and Bacco also doesn't want me to. I feel like with Bacco, like, because whenever in the Mon Valley, like, whatever, whatever happened there, everyone knows, but um, <laughs> Bacco, like, pulled me aside the next day and was like, no, we're not going to do that again. And then ever since then, I was kind of like, okay. So I give him credit for that one. <laughs> so, you know, you, you talk about your coach. Is it a little weird in a sense that, you have more experience on this team than your head coach at this point because you've been around this year four years. He, he's in year number one, but yeah. it, it's such a different dynamic now. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I mean, it's a little odd, but it's kind of funny because, like, so so far this year when we played against Carmichael's, I was like, Coach, that one girl, she has, like, a weird jump shot, but it goes in. He's like, okay, whatever. And then, like, she banged a shot on us, and I was like, I, I told you so. Like, I don't know what you're doing. Like, <laughs> I don't know. It's That's his call, not mine. So I just – I tell him some things, and if he listens, he does. If he doesn't, he doesn't. But, but I think that's also a good thing. It shows, you know, your veteran, in a sense, leadership on this team, what you've mm -hmm. been around. And, 
know, it's like, okay, I'm going to tell you things that I think, but mm-hmm. you don't always have to agree with me. Yeah, that's yeah, that's the thing. Like, I know he's like said like he wants me to be like a version of him on the court, like spitting image. He said like I just need to call the plays, and make sure they know the plays. That's like the big big. They have been absolutely fantastic you guys in general you've been doing a ton of scoring as well which is great but one more question not necessarily about the team not really about your scoring but you know i asked this uh and i think every interview i've done so far and it's a little bit of an odd one but is the national anthem the best pump-up song in sports (laughs) i'll explain which i have to everybody so far when I played, it was always that last thing we hear before we start the game. It's the last time to kind of clear your thoughts yeah. and get your head together and then get out onto the court. I mean, I would say, yeah, maybe. Like, it's kind of funny. So we stand in order. Um, it's normally, like, the three seniors that are in order. And, like, when you like you hear, like, the we like, we say it. And, like, I think, yeah, I would say, like, kind of it's like a. It doesn't have to be. I, I mean, I know I say greatest, use that loosely, but it's one of those things. It truly. Yeah, like, no, it, those, it clears your mind. Yeah. It gets you ready to go do the job at hand. Get the job done, yeah. And that's, I would say so, yeah. Uh, and that's something you guys have done very well, but they're shutting the lights out on us here, as you can tell. So Sarah we Caddy. come back. <laughs> hey, we'll have the second half of your game right here on MVI Live, simulcast on the Trib Live High School Sports Network. A big thanks to Chloe Portash for stopping by for our halftime interview. We'll be right back here on MVI Live. Have you always wanted to install security cameras in your house, but none of the commercial installers wanted to bother with you? Now you can call Kevin Ike Evangelo at Right Bike Computers for all your residential security camera needs. Call Ike at 724-272-2145 for your free security camera analysis. If you're looking for somewhere to eat after the game, check out our friends down at the Foster House, too, serving up their famous king sandwiches seven days a week until 11.30 p.m. The Foster House, too, located at One Cook Road in Bel Vernon. Back here on the Trib Live High School Sports Network, MVI Live's coverage of this preliminary round matchup between the Mighty Mikes and the Frazier Commodores. We'll take another, again, look at the bracket while we have a chance here. Number one, Osh waiting the a winner of this one, the Shannick 2. At number three, Sarah Catholic, another Valley school in GCC at number four. They are the only top four team who knows their foe. Aliquippa Southside will take on, the winner of that game will take on Sarah Catholic. Springdale and the Ellis School will take on the Shannick, whoever wins that game. As again, this is for that 16 seed to take on number one Osh. But Jeremy, you again agreed with me kind of. That might be where you you want to be out of those top three schools. I know that's the one team out of the top three that I think is beatable. I think I I, I think so. And I I'm think... not saying by necessarily the 16 team, but I think out of that, the best matchup that you're going to I think see in this playoffs could be the semifinal between the Shannick and. Sarah Catholic. Assuming both teams get there, which yes. is a very high probability, I, I agree. I think those two were the two teams you would expect to be one of the the top seed, but you know the WPIL felt differently and gave it to Olsh. So, as we are underway in quarter number three, near side Felsher, Felsher sends it back around. That's to Santo. Santo in the left wing drives down right block. Santo. Inside, taken away. Turned right back over by the Mikes, and it's a tie-up, and it's going to be, should be Mighty Mike basketball, I believe. Frazier got out of the break, but they never switched the arrow. They're switching it now. I was going to say, I I don't think I'm crazy about that, that the arrow just never got changed. They forgot to switch it after the inbound. As slowly taking her time as Betis, far side Mejia. Mejia taken away by Delaney Warnick. Here comes Warnick back the other way, lays it up, no good. Rebound grabbed down, knocked down with Simon. Simon skips it underneath, that's to Mejia. Far side Betis, Betis back up top, Mejia. Mejia one more, three up and that one rattles, no good. Rebound taken down and... Kicking it far side, Voidhofer no good. Rebound and a tie up and that one eventually wrestled out of bounds. And they're gonna give it to the Mighty Mikes from Carmichael's. 
Again, more of a box in one look. Gabby McGavitt staying step for step with Zalar. Betis misses the three. Newcomer missed the rebound. Mejia has it, but we're going to have another tie up. It's going to go down to Frazier. Fedoras get a chance still to get the first points here of this quarter, down 29 28. 6.54 and rolling in a third quarter game. Maria Felscher into Newcomer. Newcomer dribbles it back up top. Now it's Hazel Baker catch release. Can't get the fall rebound. Newcomer off the window and in, and she's fouled. That's Newcomer's 10th rebound of the game. Six points for Newcomer. She will go to the line. She is 0 for 2. Frazier is a team shot 2 for 7 from the stripe in the first half. 13 for 17 was Carmichael's. Traditional three-point play complete for Eliza Newcomer. Lead the two for Frazier. Foul win against Mejia, that's her second. Zalar tries to drive in up top, Mejia. Top of the key, foul line put up. Simon no good, another board for Newcomer. Up ahead, and that one slammed out. And eventually they say touched by Mejia as Delaney Warnick and Emily Mejia collided. Felsher the trigger in. Hazel Baker will fire again off the mark once more for Taylor Hazel Baker. Betis over the divider. Betis. Now it's Mejia. Gets it back, goes to Betis left side. Betis to Mejia, Mejia near side, Simon. Back up top, inside they go to Simon. Simon picks up her dribble up top, Betis for three. That one no good. Far side, Voidhofer off the offensive rebound. Mejia sees Elaine, now kicks it Zalar, right wing. Zalar floats it with the right. Back iron, no. Rebound grabbed down by Eliza once more. Now it's Maria Felscher. Over the divide. Far side, McGavitt. McGavitt up top, Felscher near side, Hazel Baker. Hazel Baker to Felscher once more to McGavitt right side. Felscher top of the key. They swing at the Hazel Baker. Newcomer wants it. Instead, they work it around the horn again. McGavitt unloads. Rebound. Warnick. Warnick won't fall. Second effort. Yes. And that's where Zaylor's foul trouble comes into play because she could not step up again after that block. 13 points for Laney Warnick. Near side they come. Inside to the top of the key. Mahia off the mark. Rebound, Hazel Baker slows the pace down with 440 remaining in the third. Scoreless this quarter is Carmichael's, much like Frazier looked in the second. They can't get anything going offensively. Far side, McGavitt. McGavitt up top, Felsher. Felsher skips it. Hazel Baker pulls up. No good. Rebound, newcomer. That one looked to be deflected on the way up. Now here comes Zalar. Zalar pushing the issue into the right wing, changing directions up top, Betis. Now it's Mejia, back to Betis, drives in, left block on Newcomer, and she dribbled steps on the boundary. She dribbled it out, good job by Newcomer, just to kind of lean on her a little bit and force her to the, the baseline. And you look at what Frazier's going to have to do offensively, it's exactly what they're doing, is the 2-3 zone is collapsing inside on Newcomer when she comes to the high post. So you shoot an outside shot, and like I said, you're going to, You've got a very high probability of getting an offensive rebound with Newcomer and Warnick inside, and that's exactly what they've done so far in this quarter. Felsher in the left wing, sends it up. That's McGavitt, far side. To the inside they go. There's Newcomer, and Newcomer travels. Newcomer looked to kick it out. You'd like to see her put that up if you're Frazier. Yeah, use your leaping ability and just go up strong with it. Bounce pass off of Mejia and out. A little bit of miscommunication there. And so far, you got to credit the job Gabby McGavitt has done on Zalar. She's only touched the ball once so far in four minutes and 15 seconds. See if Frazier tries to work to Warnick, who has Zalar guarding her. 
Warnick flashes high post. Hazel Baker to McGavitt, back up top, Delaney Warnick kicks it to McGavitt. Now they go to Santo. Santo McGavitt right wing now. McGavitt goes back up top, and that's where it's handled by Hazel Baker. Hazel Baker skips it far side, driving in and being fouled was Gabby McGavitt. Good job by McGavitt to see her lane to the baseline and aggressively head towards the hoop because if you get that defender to come toward you, that's going to leave Newcomer wide open on the block. Third foul on Mejia. Warnick rattles it in. Delaney Warnick up to 15. There's Mejia near side. Simon, Simon to Zalar. Zalar, right side. Far side they go. Betis drives in, floats it up. No good. Rebound, two mics collide. And a dual possession force. It stays with Carmichaels, who's went five minutes and two seconds without a bucket at the minimum. That's this quarter. Jeremy, do you have a time of their last bucket in quarter number two? 31 seconds. Betis hit a three. Uh, out of town scoreboard. Lincoln Park up 74 to 19 on the York boys. As that one taken away, McGavitt with the steal, looking for the score. Right block lays it up. Four She's fouled. On Zaylar. If you're what? Sophia Zaylar, you gotta let her go. What a take by McGavitt. She got tunnel vision with the ball, and that one paid dividends as Zaylar, as you mentioned, number four. And again, you. You can't afford to not have her in there right now, I think. McGavitt sends it up, sends it through. McGavitt now one for two from the line. She has three points. Frazier has a 36-29 lead. McGavitt, front iron, no, rebound taken Zaylar. by Zaylar. There goes Zaylar in transition into the front court. Zaylar, top of the key, now Mejia. Mejia to Zaylar, Zaylar right wing. Now it's Betis. Betis looks to drive in. Betis puts it up and knocks it through. First bucket of the quarter belongs to Betis. I think Frazier, they didn't keep with that box in one look. Betis has 16. Frazier has a five point lead with two 16 and counting here in the third quarter. McGavin and Warnick play a little catch. Now Gabriella McGavitt drives in. McGavitt turns things over. See if this starts a spark here for the mighty Mike Sanchez ever closer. Down by five. Mejia far side. Betis. Now it's Voidhofer. Voidhofer back to Emily Mejia. Mejia near side. Zalar drives in. Zalar right block lays it up. No good. Rebound. Zalar put back. No. And that one eventually works back to Zalar. She misses again. Tie up forced. Frazier basketball with 147 remaining in the third. But if you're Zaylar, you got to find a way to put the ball in the basket there. You had three opportunities. Absolutely. And Zaylar, the leading scorer, the go-to player for this Mike's team, could not provide this time by. You could see, though, she's visibly frustrated. I think that fourth foul puts a little bit more pressure on her. She knows she has to be careful. And with that frustration, you think you even want to attack her more on the defensive end. As there's Santo. Newcomer posting up. That's, yeah, she's on a freshman. Yeah, that's Jacobs. Allie Jacobs, 5'10". So, Frazier will reset up top with Felsher. Far side, taking away Mejia. Now it's Betis. Bortenhofer make that. Zaylor running the floor. Zaylor, right side. Zaylor drives up, floats it up. No good again. Iron very unkind to Zaylor. Another tie-up. This time it's Mike Basketball. 107 remaining here in the third. Five point Frazier lead. Delaney Warnick on the bench at this juncture. Far side, Zaylar with the triple, got it! Huge three by Zaylar, lead back to two. Coach Kenny Johnson gonna take a fine, uh, another timeout, I think you you have to go back to that box in one look, and you got to deny her the ball. You can't let her heat up now. Zaylar has 16, tied for the team lead with Ashton Betis. 15 for Delaney Warnick, 7 
for Eliza Newcomer and six for Taylor Hazelbaker. Those all came back in quarter number, or half number one, I should say. But you mentioned, I mean, Betis and Zolar have all but two points of this for this team. The other two belong to Megan Voidhofer from the charity stripe where she went two for two. Frazier on top with the basketball. Zalar the leading scorer for the Mikes all season, just two below her season average, but she has four fouls. 58 seconds remaining here in the third. Taylor Hazelbaker over the divide. Hazelbaker to her left. Surveys her options. Far side, Felsher. Felsher puts it on the floor. Felsher near side, Hazelbaker. Hazelbaker back to Felsher. Beyond the perimeter, it's Maria Felsher. Felsher has Bateman inside, instead kicks it across. That's the Hazelbaker. Zalar almost took it away. She lets Hazelbaker go, banks it, no good. Rebound, Newcomer, put Newcomer back, again. yes. They cannot stop Eliza Newcomer on the boards. Nine points for Newcomer, one point away from a double-double for the senior. Mejia, far side, and that one's almost taken away by Santo. Driving in, there's the steal by Bateman, who's fouled by Mejia. And that's number four on Emily Mejia. Good so two there, starters yep. in foul trouble with four for the Mighty Mikes. Four fouls to none this quarter. The Commodores here can get another big swing as they have the ball now with the final 10 seconds and they get possession coming out of the half or out of the quarter. Felsher, Warnick inside, nice Newcomer, there's the double-double. Great pass by Warnick. Frazier up 40, 34, after three. The Doors looking for their first postseason win since 2015. When we come back, we'll see if they can do it right here on the Trib Live High School Sports Network. Good luck to all our area basketball teams for the WPIAL playoffs from your friendly local insurance agency, Goosehead Insurance, Braddock Agency, in Carmichael's, Pennsylvania. They're here for all your insurance needs. Give them a call at 724-966-2277. Back here on the Trib Live High School Sports Network, MVI Live's coverage of this preliminary round battle for the 16th seed between the Doors and the Mighty Mikes. Again, they split the regular season, both teams winning at home. It was a five point victory for Carmichael's at home, a nine point win for Frazier at home. Frazier up by six, entering the final quarter of regulation. Frazier added 12 points that quarter, going from 28 to 40. Carmichael's just five. We have Newcomer for 11 points now. 11 points, double-double for Eliza Newcomer. As it is, Commodore basketball looking for an old 2 for o possession this time, getting the last score before the quarters changed and the first possession of the fourth. Inside, There's Newcomer, can she do it again? Five. five on Mejia. She's out. Emily Mejia just 16 seconds into the fourth. Has her game, possibly season, and career come to an end for the 5'6 senior, Emily Mejia. Catch and release, Hazelbaker no good, but it works as a perfect pass. Newcomer just couldn't finish. Now it's Zalar. Zalar pushing the issue. She knows they need points and they need them now. Zalar drives in, puts it up. She's Ooh. fouled by Eliza Newcomer. She got her with the body, otherwise that was gonna be a jump ball. It's Eliza's third foul. First foul in the Commodores this half, end of the quarter. Shot up and in for Zalar. 
17 for Zaylar. She is now five for five from the charity stripe. Yeah, I think you gotta go back to that box in one look. You have to. Zaylar, make it six in a row. She does not miss from the line. Rated right her season average of 18. Frazier still up by four. Far side, Felsher inside, newcomer tries to bully her way in, then kicks it out. It's Santo to Felsher. Maria Felsher getting the directions to back up from the bench. It's gutsy too, because they move Zaylar to the middle. Warnick wanted the ball, she did not get it. Santo. Take the time, you got, it. You got the lead. You know, they I love the, rush. love the way Kenny Johnson's coaching this right now. He's almost coaching it like a walkthrough, saying, okay, you pass it here, now you would move right. up here. And he's doing this in live game action. Saying he's telling her to stay there. They're going to bring Carmichael's out, which is going to open up inside for Newcomer and Warnick. There is Newcomer. Newcomer back out. Felsher, they there move it, it out to Santo. Time continues to... Tick away, it's a big old game of Commodore keep away. They've had the ball for a minute. Santo, bounce pass Felsher, back to Santo. Santo goes to Felsher. Felsher to Santo once more. Santo, now it's Hazel Baker, the newcomer sees part no good. Put back, no, now it's Warnick, she can't finish. And Coach Johnson can't believe it. As back the other way, a foul and almost a score. I think they got away with a travel there. Maria Felscher picks up the personal. Three easy looks at the bucket. Frazier could not finish any. Remember that one as this game moves along. Great. Lloyd Hoffer puts it up, puts it in. Seven for seven from the line, nearing 20. Lloyd Hoffer, 420. That's Zaylar. Oh, Zaylar, thank you. She did miss one though. That's the first one. Lloyd Hoffer is two for two from the line, but those are her only two points. Newcomer, can she right the wrong? She can. This time she gets the make. 13 for Newcomer, 42-37 Frazier. And a timeout called. Yeah, for Frazier, it's all day in the paint. Every time you get the ball down there, that ball gotta go to the paint. Full timeout called by the Carmichael's Mighty Mikes. And give us one more chance to thank our friends from Goose Insurance out in Carmichael's for hopping on as a sponsor for this game on the Trib Live High School Sports Network. Good luck to all of our area basketball teams for the WPIAL playoffs from your friendly local insurance agency, Goosehead Insurance, Braddock Agency in Carmichael's, Pennsylvania. They're here for all your insurance needs. Give them a call at 724-966-2277. Back here on the Trib Live High School Sports Network, Alex Lines, Jeremy Salou with you as Jeremy Frazier up 42-37, but one of our local teams has gone final. Yeah, Lincoln Park, the number five seed in Quad A boys beats Yawk 90 to 38. What was it, 79 to 18 at halftime or something? It was, yeah, it was, it it was, was right around It was that. bad, it was, it was bad. Wasn't pretty. No. The Mike's inbound looking to get back under the board. They're down 42-37. We got 5.33 remaining in the fourth. And they go back to the box and one look on Zaylar with Felsher Gardner. And this was to be expected. The Mike's coaching staff had been prepared for him. When you see a team three times that one knocked out by the doors, you kind of know what to expect. There's not many surprises left. Right. And the only time Zaylar has really scored has either been A, from the foul line, or B, when they're not in this look. Zaylar, three points this quarter, all from the line. And she had a late three in the third quarter. But it's been a while. Blocked by newcomer, Voighthofer denied. I wonder if uh, 
Looks like Felcher is having a little fun with Zayar. You think they're talking about softball? I think there's a little smack talk about the upcoming softball season? Here. I think there could be. And, uh, you know, Felcher has all the room to talk after what Frazier did to Carmichael's last year. And that's going to go out of bounds. That'll be another turnover for the Mikes. They're calling that my, they're, they're calling that Carmichael basketball. Everybody, I think, thought, oh, maybe not. No, no they just they have They were to all take pointing to where, yeah. Uh, they have to take it out. Every there. official was pointing. I'm like, you know, sometimes the officials get me. It's been a while since I've had to remember exactly what the officials are saying. Carmichael's in man well, here. You're going to look for Warnick on Zalar, I think, here, right? Think you, you would, have to. You would think. Or Instead, go they down, go newcomer. Newcomer inside on a freshman. That ain't going to work. No, Eliza Newcomer. She's been oh so good this half. 15 points, 11 here in the second half. 44-37, the doors can feel the energy changing in their direction even further as another miss and another rebound by Newcomer in the tie-up force. And Newcomer got, I think, hit up high there. She got hit in the nose. She got some blood coming from the nose. She got to go out, right? It looks like she's bleeding anyway. Unless the, as long as there's not any on the jersey, I think she's okay. And it's not that it's physically consistently bleeding. And it's not. She's not bleeding. It's going to be Carmichael ball, unless they did call the foul. If they call the jump ball, it's Mighty Mike basketball. If they did call the foul, the newcomer tried to call a timeout too there, and that's what the entire student section is saying as right. well. So wait to see what the call is. If it's a tie-up, it should be Carmichael's basketball. Wait, wait, we got the official at the table. No, yeah. they, it is they say they're right. So did they call a foul? No, I think they, the arrow just got, forgot to get flipped again because that's not the first time we've seen that today. So it very well could be an arrow issue as Santo to Felsher. Felsher sees a lane, takes it, she's fouled. Maria Felcher will shoot a pair. She's one for two from the strike. Foul's going to go against Betis. I believe that's her second. Maria Felcher, a softball player, as mentioned. Some second base, some outfield for the Lady Doors. There's point number four for Maria Felcher, number 45 for the Commodores. Also a volleyball player for the Hartmans here at Frazier. Yeah. The free throw shooting doesn't matter anything that happened before this quarter. As long as you make these ones, you're, you're where you want to be. Exactly. The lead grows to nine. 4.26 remaining here in quarter number four. Not even 10 points this half for Carmichael's. We're near the halfway point of the fourth. Simon way off, Zalar fouled, and that might be number four against Eliza Newcomer, and that could be a big loss if she ends up with number five. They uh, call that on Felcher. Felcher from behind there. And I'm sure the Commodores are perfectly fine with that not going against Newcomer. Yeah, Felcher, they were both going for it. Felcher did have her from behind, but I thought they were going to get Newcomer, and Zalar has missed two already this quarter. Started seven for seven. Missed her last two. She needs this one. Shooting at the Commodore student section. She knocks it down for number 20. There's All point number 38 for the Mikes. All four points of this quarter have come from Zalar free throws. There is Felsher. Felsher drives in. Down low. Warnick up over Zaylor. Back iron. No. Rebound. Hazel Baker can't get it. Now it's Warnick kicking it out. Santo for two. That one won't fall. Another rebound. Newcomer puts it up. She's fouled. So we got two offensive rebounds there for Newcomer. One for Warnick. And Eliza Newcomer has hit 20 rebounds. Foul goes against the freshman, Allie Jacobs, her first. Team's eighth, Eliza Newcomer, one for one this half. Make her two for two, give her 16 points for the senior. She's turned her game up immensely in this second half. Give her another. Newcomer, three for three this quarter, or this half from the charity stripe after starting 0 for two. 
has scored 17 points in the game, only four in the first half. A steal by Hazelbaker, had some help from Santo. Oh, I thought the referee was going to blow the whistle. She just didn't, she didn't blow it. It looked like when Hazelbaker was going to lose it, she was going to blow it and give the foul. But once Hazelbaker had possession, they kind of just said, okay, let's play on. Felsher got away with a little shuffle there. She took the pass, but no call there. 317 remaining in the fourth quarter. Ten-point doors lead. There Santo floats it up. It She's high. fouled. It's going to be Voithofer, I believe. If it is, that will be her second. Yep. And it will be just that. Number nine on the mics. Elizabeth Santo will shoot a pair. Santo sends it up, and that one rattles no good. Eliza Newcomer will come out. I think that's just to make sure she doesn't get another foul. And to protect the rim down on the other end. You don't want to break away. Santo back iron, no. Rebound grabbed down. Jacobs up to Betis. Betis thought Felscher was going for her, but Felscher was making a beeline to Zaylar. Now Voidhofer Zaylar, around the horn. Zaylar better watch. She's pushing Felscher off of her. That, that'd be a heck of a way to pick up a fifth foul. Bounce pass in. Simon, Voidhofer back to Simon. That one nearing the backcourt saved by Zaylar. Yep. Zaylar straight to the rim. Foul oh. by Newcomer. Newcomer can't her. believe it, but she came with the whole windmill she, sweep. She, she got the block, but she did hit her in the side of the head as the follow through. That is number four on Eliza Newcomer sending Voidhofer to the stripe. Eight points That's from Zaylar the charity the stripe. stripe. Do I keep saying Voidhofer? Yep. They look similar in a sense, I think. And that's what I go off of, but nonetheless, zaylar has been outstanding in this game. 21 points now. Newcomer thought she was getting substituted for. She started marching towards the bench. That was 2.43 remaining in the fourth. I think no point of taking her out. She fouls out, she fouls out as Zaylar hits a pair. Lead at eight still for Frazier. Felsher around Simon. She fell down. Or make that Hazel Baker. Now it's McGavitt. McGavitt drives in, floats it up. No good. Rebound. Bait is fighting with her own teammate, allowing the doors to regroup to force the tie up. But that was something you don't need right there. Dribble out, take a look over the offense first, and kill some clock. 232 remaining. They're going to have to foul you here within the next probably 30 seconds or so. They're going to want to start fouling if this lead stays as high as it is. Dusky staggers into the game for the Mighty Mikes. Zaylar getting a workout with Felsher down there, doing some uh, aerobics. Near side, there is Voidhofer. Voidhofer, bounce pass Simon. Simon drives it. Simon up top, Betis. Betis guarded by McGavitt. Goes out to Zaylar. Zaylar drives in. Has his Stolen pocket away. picked. Hazel Baker and Felsher team up for the steal. And head coach Kenny Johnson gets exactly what he wants, a slowed down offense. They work it inside. There's Newcomer back out. Hazel Baker pulls the trigger and knocks it down. That's a big, maybe not the shot you want, but that's a big win. You, you let, it's okay now that she made it. She misses that, you're furious, but right. the make putting the lead back to 10 and all thing, all is well and good on the Frazier side. Up by 10, 135 remaining in the fourth. Far side, that's Voidhofer inside Betis. Betis puts it up and knocks it through. First field goal of the fourth quarter. 18 for the Mikes. points for Betis. Out of bounds off of the Mikes. 123 remaining in the fourth. 50 42, your score. Frazier on top. Felsher out. We're going to have Delaney Warner going long again. Nope. Hazel Baker. Is. Has Warnick up ahead, goes that way, and Hazelbaker fouled from behind. That might be Simon's fourth. It's going to be one and one for Taylor Hazelbaker. That will be Simon's fourth. And as I mentioned, the sophomore Hazelbaker will shoot one and one. Uh, it's going to be two, right? Is that ten? Is that ten other quarter? I think you're right. Scoreboard. Uh, they say one and one. She misses, won't get another. As Warnick got the offensive rebound there. All her rebounds tonight have been on the offensive end. Eight of them. One minute and some change remaining on the clock. Santo up by eight. Santo fouled by Voidhofer. Now it's double bonus time. 
Third on Voidhofer. Santo 0 for 2 today from the free throw line. Frazier looking for their first postseason win since 2015. As that one off the mark by Santo. That game was played at another Valley school, Yock. Mm -hmm. Last time the Doors got a postseason win. As up and no good, 0 for 2 for Santo. One minute on the clock. Zalar pushes the issue. She Swap. stops up, travel, and she got slapped yep. in the face. Adding insult to injury. It was inintentional. I think it was just that her stopping kind of slid her, her momentum carried her. Actually, the travel. If she don't travel, probably all right. <laughs> Santo the trigger. Needs some help. Has Warnick near side. Bounce nope. past Zaylar the steal. Zaylar looking to drive it She's in. Zaylar stopping. had it taken away. Loose ball and a dual cool. possession call giving to the Commodores. I'm surprised no foul came I against thought. Frazier there. Nobody from Frazier had a hand on that ball. <laughs> Nobody at all. That, that probably should have been a foul. Fosher will come back in, replacing Santo. And I think, not that Santo isn't good just, with the ball. I think Fosher has been excellent on inbounds tonight. You want experience. Fosher wasn't a part of this team a year ago for Frazier. But she has experience exactly. as, a, as an athlete. No, no. You know, I, the situation's I, not going to be too big. Uh, That's a good foul on the floor. Excellent foul on the floor. Yeah, McGavitt gets the body on Betis. I don't think she thought of it that way, but it's a good time for a foul. You're not oh, going to give up a layup. You're going to have to make them use the clock and run their offense. Especially when they're not shooting. If they were shooting, then you question that. But not shooting, it definitely helps the whole sequence that time by. That's McGavitt's fourth foul. She comes out. Inbound. Betis up top. Simon needs the three. Does she have it? No. Long rebound. It's Santo. Santo, see if she tries to kick it out. She'll wheel back up top. 32 on the clock. Now it's Hazelbaker. Hazelbaker. Do they the Mike foul. Their season's over. Simon can't. She has have four. To. And that's the thing. No one's going for besides to. Simon. And now Voidhofer will. Voidhofer's lucky. She got a little push. And I think the issue is for Simon knew she's out of the game if she fouls. And no one else would go up to do it. That's going to be on Simon. She's fouled out. Taylor Hazelbaker to ice it. An eight-point lead with 17.4. The Doors can taste that first playoff win since 2015. It's been a while. It's been a long time coming. As Hazelbaker can't hit that one. She's now 0 for 2 from the strike. Not much left to do here in this one. Hazel Baker's free throw, and that might send the Mighty Mikes home. That one no good. Rebound. Staggers goes to Zalar up ahead. Here's Betis. Betis through the hands of Staggers. Now it's Zalar. Zalar escapes near side. Betis. Betis kicks it back out, deflected out to prolong the inevitable. And head coach Kenny Johnson putting in all the reserves getting them a taste of playoff action with 2.5 on the clock and I think making sure nothing happens to his starting five absolutely as Mashburn along with Sinnel, Bateman and Cortina all in and that will do it the doors for the first time since 2015 pick up a postseason victory as they defeat the Mighty Mikes from Carmichael's here this evening. 50 to 42. Carmichael's could not get the offense going in the second half. Frazier added 10 in the fourth quarter to seal the deal. Carmichael's went up to 42, adding eight to their total. So just over 10 points in the second half for Carmichael's. As, uh, make sure you stay tuned here. Uh, appreciate Nick Hicks coming over and uh, seeing if we wanted to get the Commodore head coach, Kenny Johnson, 
on for let me do my interview game. first that'd be awesome yeah i mean we'll get you on we'll get him get the headset out if i can actually find it here but the doors are victorious getting that first playoff win in what seems like forever as leading scorer eliza newcomer with 17 15 for delaney warnick 18 added by betis and 22 by sophia zalar as coach johnson kind enough to come over and join us here on the trip live high school sports network and coach uh, first off congratulations on the win and first time for you at Frazier getting the playoff wins and first time for this school since 2015 on the girls side getting a playoff win. what does that mean to you guys I appreciate you guys I appreciate you guys I mean you know from the beginning it was about trying to get into the playoffs and just that was the standard so they knew that the standard was the standard no matter who we played no matter who we filled it with the team and they give me everything they got and you know it prevailed tonight coach big inside Delaney in the first half, Eliza. Was there a little bit of a challenge to Eliza to kind of lead this team at halftime? Because as a senior, she came out in the second half. I mean, I have her for 20 total rebounds, and she was just dominant inside on the glass. Well, it's funny you say that because at halftime, I told her, I was like, do you want it to be your last game on on your home floor as a senior? So you have a home playoff game. I need you to show up, you know, in the second half. So, you know, in the second half, she normally turns it on a little bit and when we need her to, and she definitely did that tonight. Seems like your your junk defense on Zalar was really impressive. I mean, she didn't really score other than from the free throw line, and when you guys went away from that, but the job that Gabby did on her, Felcher did on her, it, it was outstanding for you guys. I mean, tonight. and we had implemented it in the second game that we played against them, so I didn't know if she would come out and, and have an answer for it, so we kind of stayed away from it early to try to save it for the later you know time if we needed to get into it. So I seen that she started to turn up the, the pace a little bit, trying to be more aggressive and trying to get to the basket. So we wanted to make sure we slowed that down and forced somebody else to try to catch up and beat us. And, Coach, uh, we saw you early on this year when you took on Charleroi. Looks night and day, this team. So what can you speak about your team's development? You say you know they all give you everything they have, but what can you say from where you started the season with this group to where they've made it? to this point to coming and winning this playoff I mean, game. a lot of these girls, and, and I've told, you know, different reporters, a lot of these girls weren't basketball players for the last couple of seasons. So, you know, me getting them early, it was rough because we had to break down all the rust, you know. But underneath rust, you can find some diamonds. So, you know, they give me everything they got, and they're fighting, and, and they've turned that corner, you know, to be able to put the ball in the hoop and do some different things to be able to play well. You mentioned about the athleticism of the girls. I mean, you got a championship volleyball team. You have a championship softball team. How much does that help when these girls are bringing that attitude, like a winning mentality, to what you want to build here as a program? I mean, and that's that's key that you bring that up because when I first took the job, I said, why not us? Right. You know, the volleyball team wins, the softball team wins. Why can't we turn that corner and be that, you know, three-headed monster in the girls' program that turns around and, and, and does some big things? So with that being said, the girls have bought into that a little bit. You know, like you said, you're bringing the championship pedigree from the other sports, and they're just excited to – to get out here and learn something and be positive and trying to turn that corner and you know this is big for us to get that home playoff game and this is the building block for the foundations of the future uh the last thing i wanted to ask you about the game was you went from 14 first half turnovers to only six in the whole second half what was different about the way you guys approached it offensively that you guys didn't have as many turnovers i mean the first thing i said when we got into the locker room was you know we're turning the ball over way too much and we're missing way too many layups so You know, we slowed down a little bit. We were trying to run early, but, you know, once we get a little bit tired, a little bit winded, we actually kind of settle down, you know, Mm. because now they don't have that energy to just run, 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 run. So, you know, once they slowed down and once they started locking in and paying attention to where we wanted the ball to go, making sure we're feeding Delaney and and Eliza inside, you know, the game kind of slows down for us and turns into the type of game that we need it to be. All right, Coach, congratulations, and uh, Go get Olsh, man. Yeah, it's going to be a tough one, but we're going to get the work. Good Thanks, luck, Appreciate Coach. you guys. Appreciate it. Thanks, buddy. Kenny Johnson, the first-year Commodore head coach, picking up his first win in his first try here in the postseason here on the Trib Live High School Sports Network. Frazier's first playoff win, as I mentioned, since 2015 when they beat Apollo Ridge 56-53. So the doors on top. Here this evening on MVI's coverage of this game on the Trib Live High School Sports Network. Appreciate you all out there tuning in to 
the exclusive home for the WPIAL postseason, the Trib Live High School Sports Network. And on behalf of Jeremy Slew, I'm Alex Lyons saying thanks for tuning in one final time. Your final score, Frazier 50, Carmichael's 42. You heard it all here on the Trib Live High School Sports Network. Have a great rest of your Friday and weekend, everybody.